there at the bottom of the screen, or you can email us at the email us you see right now on your screen. And yesterday, after the Chamber's legislative wrap-up, I had the opportunity to sit down and visit with several of North Dakota's state senators. We talked about tax relief, higher education, the future of the FM diversion project. Here's the first of my two interviews. Senator Tony Grinberg, Senator Grinberg, uh, obviously a very arduous session. Uh, you know, you talked about removing Chancellor Shivani. There's a big meeting coming up this Thursday for higher ed. Do you think Chancellor Shivani survives? Well, you know, we'll wait and see. Um, you know, the board's got to make some, you know, difficult decisions on the future. Uh, obviously, there's been a number of issues that have been raised during legislative session and certainly outside of that with um, certain uh, feelings on various campuses and the students. And so, you know, at the end of the day, I hope they do the right thing. And if they decide to retain Chancellor Zervani, then they've got some work to do to repair a lot of um, relationships. You've been through several sessions. As you look back over this one, Anything you'd change, say, hey, you know, we should have done this differently as you look back on that? And if so, why? Well, that's, very, that's an interesting question in a 30-second sound bite. <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, as I said earlier in our, 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 our panel session here, um, North Dakota is a different state. And when you look at um, the challenges we had um, uh, moving the legislative process along here last week and finishing Saturday, uh, I think it reflects that North Dakota is changing. Uh, you know, we're abundant in resources, uh, the decisions of what to do with those resources, tax relief, investments in infrastructure, taking care of people. Um, you know, it's a, it's a profound time. And I, I think North Dakotans should recognize that for years we struggled and we were not a destination. And now we're a destination in many fronts and our, our economy is strong. And uh, our decisions, I believe, that we made this last legislative session will position us for, for decades into the future. You're a part of the Senate, Pro Senate Appropriations Committee. I looked at the executive budget back in December. Everyone was like, boy, that's a lot of spending. And you guys, as a legislative body, ended up spending $2 billion more than what he proposed as a Republican, quote unquote, conservative. How do you explain that? Well, there are a lot of needs. And, you know, I mean, that's the beauty of the legislative process. Whether I have ideas for spending in Fargo versus my colleagues in Williston, for example, a significant part of that number went into additional one time spending up in the Bakken in a, the northwest part of the state where infrastructure, whether it's roads and bridges, uh, emergency medical services, to helping build hospitals, to build schools, that's a significant part of it, as well as overall support for other um, building projects in the university system. You know, a new medical school at UND. At a point in the state's history, you know, we should be taking, taking a look at some of those investments, but as well, reducing taxes. And with over a billion dollars in tax relief this session, combined um, from 2009, for example, we have reduced income taxes 42 percent in North Dakota. Property taxes, um, with the efforts that started a few years ago, uh, the net will be 45 percent reduction in property taxes. So when you combine all that and the investments in education and in infrastructure, we still have about two and a half billion dollars in reserves looking forward. So it's a delicate balance, um, knowing that someday these days will probably change. And so we want to make sure that we're not um, overspending. And I suppose some could argue that we spent too much, but I think it's a balanced plan. And that's, that's, that's what North Dakotans need to understand. It's a balanced package. And a, a significant number of that spending is one time. So if the economy turns, uh, that one time goes away. Big difference. So the people got $1.1 billion in tax relief this session. You just mentioned there's about $2.5 billion in reserves. In 2017, there's projected to be $3 billion on legacy fund. Should there have been more tax relief for the people of North Dakota? Well, uh, the tradition of the legislature is to be cautious. And certainly with the reserves we're building and that the, the voters put the legacy fund in place. And the legislature can't touch that until 2017. So I expect over the next few years, we're going to be asking the citizens, um, or they're going to be telling us uh, what the legacy fund should be used for. When you look at the reserves we have now, it's, it's, it's just a prudent way of managing financial resources, a, a budget stabilization fund, and the strategic investment improvement fund, which is funded by oil extraction and production tax. And so it's a combination of things. And when you add it all up, you know, it's a lot of money, um, but at the same time, um, we need to be cautious. Do you think the diversion gets fully funded by the feds? I believe over time it'll happen. Yeah, I think over the next year we'll start to see um, that uh, funding from the federal government start to flow in. And uh, as we know, it's going to be on an installment basis, and that'll equally be the way that North Dakota approaches it with future bienniums. And um, over time, uh, we need to address you know, the, the project so it gets completed, work with the upstream group on their, their issues and mitigation, and then alleviate this challenge with uh, the uh, federal government subsidizing flood insurance now to not having residents pay exorbitant rates for flood insurance. And that's, that's the big picture where we need to get to, but it's going to take at least a decade. Anything else you want to share? 
great, great to see you, Chris, and um, see you back in two years. <laughs> the sun's out. It's finally That's over. <laughs> Stay with us. Again, thank you for all your hard work as well. We really appreciate it. Much more coming up right here on 630 Point of View. A larger population.